What's up guys, Eric here from Techisode TV and today we've got the 512 gigabyte iPhone 11 Pro Max on the left and the brand new 512 gigabyte Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with the Snapdragon processor on the right. This is the fastest iPhone against the fastest Note device and we're going to see which one is faster in a three part speed test. And as always, time codes are in the description in case you guys want to jump around to a different part of the speed test. And don't forget to drop a like if you appreciate video time codes. First things first, we need to make sure there are no apps open in the background. And there aren't, so we are good to start the test. Right off the bat, I want to point out that I'm fully aware that the iPhone 12 will be out very soon, and I will be buying the top tier of that phone to do another speed test against the Note 20 Ultra. This video is for people who maybe already have an iPhone 11 Pro Max and are considering switching to the Note 20 Ultra, or are just otherwise cross-shopping these two devices. Also, I know that fair tests are extremely important to you guys, so if you check in the description, you'll see a full list of everything I did to make this as fair of a test as possible. And I highly recommend that you check that out because I did a lot of different things. With that out of the way, let's talk about these tests. So the first test is to see which phone can open apps the fastest. At the top, you'll see a counter to show which phone is opening the apps faster. This video was filmed at 60 frames per second, and I'll be watching the replay frame by frame to determine which phone completely finished loading the apps first. If the phones open apps within about an eighth of a second to each other, neither phone will get a point because that could just be the time difference between me pressing on one screen versus the other. Also, there are two very close apps that I'll play back frame by frame after the test, so you can see exactly why I gave the point to a particular phone. Those two apps are the Mail app and Spotify. So if you think I got the count wrong on those, wait until you see it frame by frame. The second test is a RAM test, so we're going to be going backwards through the apps to see how many are still open. There are tallies at the top again to keep track of how many reloads each phone has. Obviously, the less reloads, the better. On this part of the test, you'll notice that I missed the Zillow app icon on the Note 20 Ultra the first time I try to press it, 
But I'm not too concerned about that because this part of the test is just to see if any apps have to reload. Plus, as you can see, both phones load apps from RAM incredibly quickly and any differences between them are negligible at this point. So here's the playback of the mail app, which looks like the point should have gone to the note. However, if you watch the mail icon at the bottom, it doesn't finish loading its number until after the iPhone finishes loading its mail app. And here's the playback of the Spotify app. If you watch the brightness of the album covers, you'll see that both phones finish loading the album covers at exactly the same time, so neither phone gets a point with this app. We'll talk about the results of the first two tests in a minute, but first I want to talk about how these perform within applications for day-to-day -day use. In terms of gaming, I tried Asphalt 9 at max graphics settings and couldn't tell any difference between the two phones in terms of frame rate or detail in the graphics. I then tried PUBG with the graphics set to HDR and the frame rate set to Extreme, the highest settings available on both phones. Again, I saw literally zero difference in performance. Both phones didn't skip a single frame, and the graphic detail was excellent on both. However, when comparing them side by side, the Note 20 offers a more vibrant image and feels more immersive because of how much smaller the bezels are. And speaking of bezels, the notch on the iPhone was surprisingly not distracting because of how you hold the phone. However, if you use a game controller, the notch would likely be a little bit annoying at first. The other significant difference I noticed was that the iPhone did get noticeably hotter than the Note 20 Ultra did after a full round. Like, almost uncomfortably hot. Fortunately, I didn't notice any thermal throttling, and I was able to maintain high frame rates and sharp graphic detail despite the heating. And I should also point out that even after subsequent games, the iPhone didn't get any hotter, it just got really hot and stayed there. And in case you're wondering, I tried the Note 20 Ultra in its max allowable resolution of 2316 by 1080 in the 120Hz mode, and at the phone's max resolution of 3088 by 1440 in 60Hz mode, and the phone performed identically in both scenarios. Video editing is a completely different story. I tried exporting the exact same 4K 30fps video with the exact same color effect applied on both devices using Adobe Premiere Rush, and, well, the iPhone completely decimated the Note. Like, it's literally more than twice as fast as the Note when rendering videos. Just to make sure it was a fair test, the 4K footage came straight from my Panasonic GH5S, but I also ran the test with native footage from both devices in 4K60, 4K30, and even 1080p at 30 frames per second, and the results were exactly the same in every scenario. The iPhone was more than twice as fast at rendering video. So if you do a lot of video editing on your phone, you may want to go for the iPhone instead. In terms of general apps usage for things like Twitter, Facebook, note apps, email, etc., there wasn't much of a noticeable difference in day-to-day -day use. I feel like the iPhone will reload applications a bit more often than the Note in real-world usage, but it was nothing over the top or frustrating. So when we look at all the results as a whole, we've learned that the Note 20 Ultra opens apps noticeably faster than the iPhone. They both have more than adequate RAM management, they perform very similarly for social media and other generic tasks, but the Note 20 Ultra definitely offers a better gaming experience due to the smaller bezels and being able to stay cooler to the touch with heavy gaming. The iPhone, on the other hand, clearly takes the win for on-the-go video editing. 
So at the end of the day, if you're a heavy gamer, the Note 20 Ultra is going to be the better buy. But if you want to edit a lot of videos on your phone, the iPhone is the clear choice. And if you just use your phone for social media, maybe some light gaming and generic tasks, then pick whichever phone has the operating system you personally prefer. If you guys found this video helpful and want to help me out, go ahead and hit that like button down below to help me beat the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys want to see my upcoming iPhone 12 speed test, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be notified right when the video is uploaded. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.